So now in this video we're going to look at uh, having a servo where we have uh, two positions. So right now the switch is not being pressed, we're in one position and when we press the switch it goes into the other position. We let go, it goes back to the original position. The servo we're using is the SG90 right there. Of course if you're using one you should look at the data sheet for the specifics but we're using uh, 5 volt in uh, this video right here. It has uh, signals that you give it and that's over about a 20 millisecond period of time. Doesn't have to be exact right there. Um, so this whole process happens about 50 times a second. 555 timer can easily do that. And uh, mostly the output is low, as you can see there. So we have a higher value uh, resistor for discharging the capacitor down to one third of the supply voltage, at which time the output is low. Now for it being high, we have a much uh, shorter period of time. We want about one to two milliseconds, approximately, right there. And uh, so we got less resistance um, coming to charge the capacitor up to two thirds supply voltage. Remember, when it's a stable mode, it keeps bouncing between uh, one third and two thirds supply voltage, it keeps going uh, up and down. Uh, while it's charging, the output is high, and while it's discharging, the output is low. So we got much more resistance while it is discharging. So now I have some jumpers on the board. We will cover them right there. Pin one is the ground pin and pin eight is the VCC or positive supply pin uh, right there. That powers the 555 timer. And also if you don't uh, set a voltage to pin five there, it uh, sets the two voltages that the 555 timer is looking for less than one third supply voltage or more than two thirds supply voltage. Um, so we'll come back to that. Um, pin four right there, that's the reset pin. If this is uh, connected close to ground, about zero volts, the output will be low no matter what. And uh, so we put it to the positive supply so that it doesn't do anything. And it's not going to influence the 555 timer right there, as long as we have a high enough voltage applied to it. And we have a jumper from pin 2 to pin 6. So they monitor the voltage. Pin 2 is uh, waiting for the capacitor to get less than one third supply voltage then it will set the output high if it wasn't high already. And uh, pin six is waiting for the capacitor there to get to two thirds supply voltage or higher. And then it sets the output low if the output wasn't low already. So now, as we said before, these uh, two pins are looking for a changing voltage moving between one third and two thirds supply voltage. Capacitors there, their main thing is they change uh, voltage if you have uh, them charging or discharging current moving in and out so we're going to use a 0.22 microfarad capacitor right there one side to ground so we could go down to zero volts if uh, we wanted to and uh, we can also charge it up to uh, up to five volts right there but again the 555 timer is going to make sure it bounces between one third and two thirds supply voltage as we said before since uh, we want a slow discharge we have a one 100,000 ohm resistor there. Going from the capacitor to pin seven. Pin seven lets it discharge. It connects to uh, ground when the output is low. And uh, that will get the capacitor discharging right there. Now we don't want uh, this resistance being add up when we charge the capacitor. Then it would take even longer to charge than to uh, discharge. So we got a diode right here. Whatever current is coming while the capacitor is charging can go around that 100,000 ohm resistor right there and uh, so it will basically mostly just be the resistance right there setting the timing so we're putting that parallel and I know it was hard to see you may not be able to see it but the gray band is down here that is the cathode you want that side to be more negative when it is conducting when that connects to ground then current will not go that way it has to go through the 100,000 ohm resistor so now when I made uh, basically this circuit a long time ago, but I used a light dependent resistor uh, right there, which allowed me to give a full range of motion anywhere along those two points that we saw before. Um, but in any case, I found we want about 4,000 ohms of resistance minimum and a maximum of 14,000 ohms of resistance. By the way, I removed the uh, power while I am wiring this together. You should always uh, do that. Now we uh, got uh, that minimum 4,000 ohm of resistance. So I'm just going to double up a couple resistors right here. This one's uh, doubling as a resistor and a jumper, moving that range um, right there. Uh, so that's 3000 ohms. And then we got the 1000 ohm resistor we're gonna put to the positive supply uh, right there. So while the switch is uh, closed, then we would get 4000 ohms of resistance. Right now, while it's open, since this resistor is here, 
uh, no current is going to flow in. Uh, but we got our minimum 4,000 ohms of resistance. Well, the switch is closed. So all we have to do is add a, a 10,000 ohm uh, resistor right there, parallel to the switch. So any of these two spots to the top and bottom of the switch it was off a spot right there when I first inserted it. And um, so there we go, 10,000 ohms. Now current can flow through the resistors uh, right there. 14,000 ohms of resistance total. And uh, if we close the switch, then it's going to go around this resistor. It takes the least resistive path. The more current uh, goes through, the less resistance. And uh, there we go. So now we will uh, zoom back, uh, move the uh, power supply over. As I said before, I put uh, one amp of current uh, maximum. And we can turn the power on now if we want. We will connect that one to that jumper and then uh, that one. So really, uh, oh yeah, we got to add the servo. Can't forget that. Um, so we have, uh, there's our brown, red, and then uh, orange. So brown is uh, ground right there. I put a blue uh, jumper right there, just breadboard jumpers. And uh, then the uh, positive supply right there is uh, red. And our, our servo moved into a position due to uh, no signal, basically. And now we plug it in, and uh, we move uh, to that position. So now we can test it. There you can see that it uh, moves pretty straightforward. And um, so you can see the power supply. I got set uh, for one amp. And there you can see it's easily like probably 200 uh, milliamps at times. If I drop this down to uh, 200 milliamps uh, maximum, we'll probably see it see, see it say CCC from 10. There we go. Whenever it says uh, CCC, it wants more than 0.2 amps. 200 milliamps of current so it's still working um, okay but uh, that is not ideal so um, if you're gonna try to go for the minimum make sure that minimum is enough where it never says CC there we go nope that still wasn't enough right there so yeah you probably want at least 0.5 amps right there 500 milliamps as your minimum current. That's one way you can test it. So the reason why it was saying CC, you could see the uh, current was uh, changing there, but it's trying to keep the uh, voltage steady. So we're gonna make it where it measures voltage right there. And um, let's uh, set this back down to uh, 200 milliamps. So it's limiting the current, but sometimes the circuit wants more. And uh, so there you can see the voltage drops down. It has to do that to uh, limit uh, current. The circuit wants more current than what the power supply will provide. So the way that the power supply denies that extra current it's demanding is to lower the voltage so it can't provide as much power. So that's just some bonus stuff since this is a short and uh, simple video. So hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out uh, all the links down below. They all help out a lot. Let's get back to enough current where we don't have to worry about this complaining that uh, we're demanding too much uh, current. Make sure you check the links down below. They'll help a lot. I'll see you in the next video.